the year is 2023. PBS Plus has just launched bringing the world's streaming services to 4,387. How can anyone be expected to go through all this content? Fear not, loyal passengers. Captain Joe Shoes and his first mate Meds are here to travel through space and time to bring you the best nuggets pop culture has to offer. Strap in. It's time for the Car Jomez Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 379 of the Car Jomez Podcast. I'm Mez, and my co host, as always, is out here. Of course, most of you guys follow us on social media. You're well aware at this point that uh, our double main man. Captain Joe Shoes lost his mom this past weekend. Sucks. <sighs> terrible. Um, sucks. Obviously, it sucks. It's terrible. Um, she was great, of course. If you love Joe. You love his mom because Joe's his mom, <laughs> and that just that that wise ass Captain Joe that you love. That's he gets that that part from his mom, and uh, she's, she's the best. And uh, you know, it's been a that's been the best year for our boy uh, Joe. He lost his dad earlier this year, so this has just been. Really bad. Um, Joe's not here. Maybe he'll be here next week. Whatever. We'll figure it out when we get there. Uh, I thought about maybe doing a a show this week, get a co-host or something, but I really wasn't feeling in the mood for that either. So, I'm going to play a couple clips here. Going through some past episodes. We've been doing that. For the new year, getting some some stuff together for you guys, some older clips and stuff. Just going through it, looking for mama shoes stuff. And then I remembered um Joe interviewed his mom one time on his YouTube channel. YouTube.com slash Joe Shoes. Like and subscribe. It was three years ago for his birthday, 2020. He uh, sat down, did a little interview with his mom. Uh, it's great. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry. You just. It's great. I'll jump on afterwards and uh, play one more clip. And uh, I'll be back after that. Talk to you uh, after the interview. What's up, everyone? This is Joe from Car Jomez, and I am back on YouTube with a very special video because today is my birthday, and I decided to bring in someone who should know a little bit about me and birthdays. It's my mom. So we got He-Man stuff all over the place because... Mm -hmm. All my videos are about He-Man toys and such. And today, happy birthday. We got the new Origin Skeletor figure, found it at Walmart. I made her pay for it because it's my birthday. I shouldn't have to pay for it. Of course not. But I wanted you here today because I wanted to do something special, something cool for everyone who subscribes and likes this video. And everybody who wants to drop down into the description and click the link to buy some merchandise to help support this show even further. <laughs> so my first question for you is, tell me about how we met. We met at about, well, we met on September 13th, 1981, at about five o'clock in the evening. You were born. Wait, 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 wait. Five, I was born at three o'clock. Yes, but I wasn't the really mothering type, I guess. 
Oh, really? So I didn't want say. any of this. I didn't want to be up for anything. So I was not that. Oh, sweet. So by the time I found out that I had had a boy, it was about five o'clock. Oh. You know. And right off the bat, you know that I'm like the most legit baby ever born. Absolutely. What until you? until I had my second son. We're, you, okay. we're going there, really. We're going there. <laughs> so, I got the He-Man stuff out. My fourth birthday was a He-Man themed birthday. So this is the 35th anniversary of me turning four. So I went on eBay. I got some decorations. What was your... Because you're nuts. Why am I nuts? Because for your birthday, I probably paid a dollar for eight hats. Okay. And eight plates. Probably paid a dollar for the table for I'm sure you paid more than that. These are eBay prices. Yes. And you know I'm cheap. It's so not 1985 never... anymore. I know. So you pay you pay the the cost, whatever it is. Right. That's why I'm not paying you for them. Oh yeah, well, yeah, I know that. Yeah, but I didn't ask you to because I That's know right. I, you yeah, did not. I know better. But He Man was my fourth birthday. Correct. And that was obviously a major thing for me as a kid. It, to this day, it still is. I've loved it basically the whole way through. Mm -hmm. Was this like my first thing? Like my first like thing? No, I don't think so. Um, well, every year for your birthday as a child, there was a theme. Correct. And it was from soup to nuts. Everything we did was themed. Everything we had out was themed. Yeah, plates, tablecloths, invitations. Um, Cake was always, I would, we used a special bakery out on Long Island because I love buttercream and they make the best buttercream in the world. So I would give them a picture of what I wanted and they would draw it on the cake. It was exquisite. So I had a He-Man cake. Yes, you did. At, at four years old. Yes, you did. I, uh, at five years old, so that would have been the year after, what would that have been, Thundercats? Did we have a Thundercats party? I'm sure we did. So we been... had a Smurf party. Mm -hmm. What was the second one? I don't know. Okay. Uh, Three would have been... Dukes, Dukes of Hazard. Crazy about Dukes of Hazard. You wanted that plastic car that wasn't motorized at the time. The General Lee. You had to pedal it. And your father and I went all over the place looking now, for this car. See, back in the day when Gomez and I first started the podcast, we spoke about this car. And I, you know, like... I don't know how much it cost. I was a, I was a fucking kid. Um, I just assumed it must have been like $100,000. No. How, how, how much does a, a, a toy generally I, cost? I think back then it was about $45, $50, 45, which 50. was a lot of money. Yeah. Because there was, wasn't a um, battery operator or anything like that. But a, adjusted, like for, a adjusted for inflation, how, what, what's that now? Like, I don't know, $1,000? I don't think it would be worth it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But then, then it was He-Man. We had baseball parties. We had G.I. Um, Joe. Joe, yes. And every cake was just, the well, cake was well, the best part. I know the G.I. Joe cake had Sergeant Slaughter painted on it. Now, I've done wrestling shows with Sergeant Slaughter. So oh, you should have shown him. Well, <laughs> funny story. You won't even care about this. Maybe these people will. Um, so I meet Sergeant Slaughter. And obviously, big wrestling star, WWF champion, you know, back when. But, like, I care that he was in the G.I. Joe movie <laughs> fighting Cobra. So I finally meet Sergeant Slaughter. And I go up to him. Hey, hey, Sarge, I'm Joe. It's really nice to meet you. I just want you to know I was a really big fan of your feud with Nemesis Enforcer in the G.I. Joe movie. And I thought they ended it too quick. You guys could have done a lot of business with returns against Cobra Law. And I just kept talking about G.I. Joe, G.I. Joe, and this old man is just looking at me like with dead eyes. And you could tell he's like getting sick of me already. And he's just like, all right, maggot, I get it. You're a <laughs> fan at ease. I was like, that's great. You yeah. know, but I, I would say the first birthday that you really understood, understood was Dukes of Hazzard. And then each year I let you choose uh, your theme. And we would go out and buy all the accessories, mm -hmm. without a doubt. We normally either had a barbecue or catered. Uh, it was always in the house or yeah. in the yard if it was a nice day. See, I don't really remember the Dukes of Hazard party, but I have very distinct and vivid memories. Well, you're four years old for this party. And, and I think not only that, but 
for whatever reason, this party was videotaped. So I think it was one of Dad's friends had a camcorder. I think Aunt Nancy. I don't, I don't know. I think it was someone else. I don't think it was Aunt Nancy. At that well, I don't know. But someone videotaped the party. And they even did like the digitized lettering on the tape that said like Joseph's fourth birthday party. And obviously I loved seeing myself on TV. Of so course. I watched the VHS. So I don't of know course. if it's I don't know if it's memories from actually well, being in the moment. It's or... also that the, the theme of He Man was carried through after that. You know, because we went to the toy store in Lindenwood when He Man was there. Yes, we met He-Man and, and Skeletor. And we met He-Man, and they picked you up and held you. Yeah, they had to be the, I'll, I'll put that picture in now, but they, those guys had to be the most powerful men in the universe to lift that baby. You are not kidding, because you had on, I'll never forget, a pair of red shorts with white stripes down the side, and I think a blue shirt with He-Man on it, and your legs, even at four years old, had creases in the thighs. <laughs> That's not funny. You know? <laughs> This is what you remember, that I was you, a fat baby. You're a little chip, chubby boy. So, and then we also, but we also went to... Um, what does that say about you if I was a fat little boy? I never denied being overweight. And look where I got I'm me. just saying, I'm saying the parenting um, skills that go in here, you just like, what was I eating? I told you I wasn't really a motherly type, okay? I told you that right off the bat. Um, not that I didn't or don't love you to the death, but, you know... Um, but then we went to uh, Radio City Music Hall. Did we saw the live show? Yes, we Radio saw the City. live show. So it was carried through, you know. Plus, I think you had every toy that they ever made at the time. I remember getting a little, like rolled up. It was. It wasn't like a real circular, but it was like a flyer that they would come to that. It would get stuck in the like the railing of the house for. Uh, was it toys and things? Was yes, the toys and things. Right. And well, that's where we went to meet them. Yes. So. I remember, like, but a flyer would show up and it would say, like, new He-Man, and we would go. Like, I know we would. We, like, there was no second You were a spoiled little bastard. Yeah, and the thing is, is, like, especially looking back on it And you still think now, you're a little bastard and you still want to be spoiled. Why do we got to call me? It's yeah. my birthday and you're calling me names. Because I love you. It, you don't, that's not an excuse. <laughs> but the thing is, looking back at it now, you know, being 39 and almost an adult. Um, yeah, but you'll never be an adult. Like, I remember... That's not true. You will be an adult. You'll never be mature. Thanks. <laughs> but you always worked. Yes. Dad always worked. Yeah. A lot of times, both of you were working multiple jobs. Right. And... So we really I, didn't raise you. No, but not, not that. It's just, I went to private school. Yes. I was always on a team or on a sport or in some kind of club or I never missed a practice or a game or anything. That's correct. Uh, if I wanted a toy, I got a toy. If I wanted a video game, I got a video game. How the fuck did you make that happen? We worked two, three jobs. Because <laughs> like I look back, I look at it now, and I'm like, you know, there's things I want to do, and I have no kids, and I have no family to support. Like everything I do is solely for me, which is great. You know, there's a, there's a lot of there's a lot I'm of good sure stuff. You love there. it that way. I, I do. I know, but, and that's okay. Yes. Does it bother you? No. Like my, my main hope in life is that you'll just be happy. Be happy and be a good person. Then I feel like I did a, a great job as a mother. I don't ask for much. So do you think you did a great job then? Yes, because you're happy. I am happy. And you're kind to people. You, you're kind to us, even though sometimes you're a ball buster. But, you know... I, you I like the, the passive aggressive. You help people when the, you can. The, the passive aggressive dig at me as you're trying to compliment me, but you just can't help yourself. I can't. I can't. But leading up to my fourth birthday, we had a little incident in the house. Why are you making that face? Of course. So what I, I tell you, you were a little bastard. <laughs> I want to know do you remember this? Yeah. This is Spidor. It's one of my favorite vehicles, figures, pieces of the Masters of the Universe collection. It is a. This is not your original. This is not my original. I picked this up in an auction on Facebook not too long ago. But it is mint and preserved with the box. Box is not sealed, but everything's in there. Um, 
but it's one of my absolute favorite toys. And it's a giant mechanical spider that Skeletor sits in. And Skeletor, as we know, especially on this channel, is my double main man. <laughs> so, what do you remember about Spider? Well, since this was your He-Man birthday, most of the toys we bought you, or all of the toys, I believe, actually, were He-Man related. Yeah. And um, really others in our family and among our friends wouldn't buy you toys. They would buy you clothes or it was like a gift, uh, not a gift card, cash. Yeah. Because you they didn't really have enough cards. toys. They didn't right, have that's what I said. It wasn't 19... a gift card. You know, but we used to buy the, the toys and, of course, put them in the closet and, you know, then wrap them when it came to the birthday so he could rip them open. But for this year, being a little wise ass, little so, whatever. So, but, but I'm not even a full four years old yet at this point. Right. I never said you were stupid. Well. You know. Anyway, he went searching for all his presents. So after that, I never kept his presents in the house. But, so I, I actually remember this. And you hid them in the closet. They were already wrapped. Everything was wrapped. So obviously I knew it was a gift for me. But I remember... Could have been for your brother. It, it, why would it be for my brother? <laughs> Nobody should get him anything. Not in September. No. I, I, like, like I understood months and dates at that time. I just knew it was time for me to get gifts. Um, I clearly remember like hearing you come up the stairs... And, and you were sitting in my closet. Our closets were large. Yeah. So there was plenty of room for you to sit. But I tried to hide under a blanket on the floor, thinking that you wouldn't see me. Apparently you saw me. No. Can't imagine. So... So, what, what, like, what is your... Saw so you in the ripped paper in front of you? <laughs> no, I mean, you know... So, when, when you see this, like, what are you thinking? I think I yelled. I remember you yelling. Yes. yes. Well, you know, it's not really yelling. I have a very loud voice. Normally, yes. Normally. So, really, it wasn't yelling. Maybe it was one little octave up. Oh, yeah. Oh, you sure? Yeah, probably. Uh, but this toy, I, I don't remember it working very well. No, it didn't. And I was just going to say that. Those legs on it, those red the, legs. Now it's battery powered. They're but it's supposed to, you're supposed to hit the button and it's supposed to walk. Yeah, but it, it always gave us a hard time. Yeah. So the one I had as a kid really, but I loved it. I mean, it's, it's right. badass. If you a giant walking spider, like it's. Uh, oh yeah. We had, we had the castle. Mm -hmm. We had a couple of vehicles. We had all the figures, I believe, honestly, that they made at the time. Mm -hmm. The the, uh, the Panther and uh, the green those, one and the those, purple one. Are those their given names, the green one and the well, purple one? Well, for me, I'm old. I can't remember everything. Battle Cat, Panther. There you go. I got Panther. Um, when we watched a, one of my YouTube videos the other day where you were watching me unbox the toys and, and you kept pointing out like, oh, I remember this one, I remember this one, I don't remember this one, and I'm like, I had this. And, you, and then you go, really? But do you have like a, a favorite toy or whatever? Me? I, yeah, that, that you eventually just gave away? You were born in September. Yes. So your first Christmas, you were only a few months old. And we bought you this tan dog, stuffed dog, with uh, dark brown ears, and we put a ribbon around its neck. I think I kept that forever. I don't even remember that. Oh my goodness. Well, what are you gonna buy a three month old little baby? Nothing, you know? he's not even gonna, if it was me and my cat, I wouldn't mind shit. I know you wouldn't. That's my favorite. The other thing that I really love, you have a green stuffed dinosaur which when you were in first grade, you got very sick. You had mono, God only knows where you got it from, but you know, and you ended up in the hospital because you had such a high fever. And you were in a regular size bed and you looked like lost. And you were in LIJ actually. And now the thing too was, was wasn't the thing that they didn't have single rooms available, so they put me... No, but you were in a single room because you were contagious. But that was the thing, but I had this massive room right. that so it was wasn't meant... Right, big room, right. I took my showers there because I didn't go home. Um, and in the gift shop, 
I found this green dinosaur. Because I, I did love dinosaurs. Yes, you know. And that to me reminds me of like your childhood. That being in the hospital. Toy, <laughs> no, but the dinosaur reminds me of everything. And you would lay in bed because your fever was high and you would say to me, Mommy, am I gonna die? And after I cried my eyes out, of course, I said, No, 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 no. You know. Did you think I was gonna die? But no. No. But I thought. Right. Well, you're seven years old, right? Six. Six. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, you know, you don't know any better. No. You know, but you were in the hospital quite a few days, and uh, Daddy would come after work, you know. But that dinosaur, I, I think you still have it till this day. I I've do seen still it have in it. pictures. Yeah. It's, uh, I would stage it. Um, in a lot of my videos. Yeah. So you will see it in the background in a bunch of those. I, and it's still, I mean, we're talking now 32, 33 years, sure. and that thing still looks brand new. Like, I don't know what it is now. It's traveled Well, I don't, you haven't really, you didn't play with that. So Not it wasn't really. abused. Yeah, 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 that's true. It just, but it's, you know, but you it's know, still old. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's old and it's, it's put on some miles now because it's moved with me probably sure. about nine, ten times. You took it with you. So, so that's what you remember the most is this dog that I have absolutely oh no recollection God. of. You had, we had this little baby seat and we had it by the tree on the floor and we had the dog's head hanging over the top. I have to find that picture. That picture is somewhere. So, I looked for a bunch of pictures from this because you were a... You took a ton of pictures. I did. As, when I, I have them, and I have them all in books now. All in books, and everything is in chronological order. So as I much know, as I can remember. I know if I'm looking for something specific that I think would, you would have or that exists, I, I know the general area to go find mm -hmm. it once I come here and, and start looking through your albums. And for this, my fourth birthday, I thought you would have so I much. I can't imagine that I don't have... Because I always took a lot of pictures at parties. Always took pictures of the cake. Always took pictures of it lit. Always took pictures of you cutting it. Always took pictures with Grandma. Then you took pictures with, you know, me and Daddy and Jason. Then you took pictures with your godparents. I mean, I, I can't understand. There's, there's three pictures total from this birthday. Well, maybe mm -hmm. I was getting tired of you by then. You having fun? You having fun? Yes, I am. Good. So I wanted to, I'm, I'm just amazed because I thought there were going to be a lot of cool pictures that I'd be able to uh, take photos of myself and insert here. And there's really not. There's a couple pictures of like all like the kids at the party and I'm like four years old so I don't have fucking friends at the time. Like, I don't no, know. well it was our friends. It would have been like children. our, yeah, like our cousins. Like, and all your cousins. But you had like Linda and Donna and their kids, you yeah, know. Yeah, but it's like, it's, it's all kids. And, Right. The kids are terrible. And, you know, it's like a couple pictures of kids and then just one by myself where I'm just standing on a chair I holding two He-Man figures and w with the, the, like the foil helium balloon yeah, uninflated, yeah. but like you, you taped it to the wall. So I guess that was you there know. for a few days and started losing air. So you... Well, we really never had your party on the day of your birthday. No. We always had your party. On a Sunday. On a, uh, usually on a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's when, why I remember. That's when Daddy didn't work because he would work nearly yeah. every other And he'd work Sunday mornings till 12 o'clock. So um, on the actual day of your birthday, we always had a small cake. And I always decorated the inside, you know, the dining room area okay. for your birthday. So that's where the balloon came from. Right. So the balloon had been standing around. I remember that too, like just the, the non-party day, because I remember trying to get the spider to work on the living room floor. We had that old brown carpet. Yeah, and it had the, like, uh, it was sculpted. Yeah, the carpet. yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. flat. The it 80s was. were fucking wild, huh? The fucking wood paneling and shit on the yes. wall. Yes. Um, yeah. So now we're here, 35 years later. In our new home. Well, not new home. But, but I've got He-Man stuff all over the place that I found on eBay. And your reaction today when you saw this was? You're fucking nuts. I've got the hats, the tablecloth, we yeah. had cake plates. I got the toy. 
that I was given 35 you years ago. You bought another toy today. I, I got a brand new Skeletor figure today. And, and your only reaction is, you're fucking nuts? Yep. Cause but you see, I know you, and this is your personality. And it makes you happy, and it makes you endearing to me, actually. I see, I thought you would get a genuine kick out of this. Because I do. you do love the nostalgia of things. Yes. So I, I love memories. Yeah, and, and I, I told everyone who knew about this. I said, I guarantee she's going to come out of the bedroom when she gets out of bed. Her eyes are going to tear up because she's going to see what I did. And then she's going to go, Joseph Michael, get that shit off my fucking table. No, I didn't tell you to take it off. My eyes did tear up. But you, did, you didn't tell me to take it off, but you did say, what is this shit on my table? Well, because now that I'm retired and I, it's just your father and I, I try very hard to keep the house in order and put everything where it's supposed to be all the time. Mm -hmm. And I like things a certain way. And I don't know why no one sees it but me, but you know, there are certain things that I like my own way. More so, so now than ever before. So I wanted to do this and I wanted to do this video because the past year has not been great. No. It has not been great. No. Over a year now. And we kind of spoke about this yesterday, where I don't know if the next time I see you is going to be the last time that I see you. Or if this time will be the last time. And I wanted to get this... I want to do this video because I wanted something that... Like, I just... Are you scared? Of dying? Yeah. I'm not scared of dying. I'm really not. Um, I'm worried of what will happen to people when I leave. And you know, I'm only here for a visit. You know, we're on Earth for however long. We're here, but we're only visiting. But like, I worry about you and your brother and your father. And we've made a lot of decisions over the past year. Um, we always thought, because Daddy has been so sick, that he would always die before me. But chances are now that I will die before him. And so we're always making decisions. Every time I have to leave him, he's my main concern. You know? See, and the thing with me is, for me personally, I've dealt with a lot of death. Yes. Whether it was grandma or some of my Two best friends. friends over the years. Obviously, this is different. And you know, and you know especially, because your dad died when you were nine. Yeah. And you've been, you've made it a lot longer than that. But that has always affected you. Yes. And And when, when dad got sick, I was, what, about 10? You were in fourth grade. Yeah, I was about 10. And I don't want to say I've always like had this fatalistic view of things, but it, it like you were very. And we've, I've always told you the truth about Daddy's illness. Yeah, I never hid anything, even when you were little. But n not that it like uh, scarred me or anything like that. But I've always had this view, like obviously, like you know, your parents are going to die right. at some point. Right. Your mother lived to eighty-five. Yep, she did. And she lived over half her life by herself. Yeah. But even then, you, you're not really ready for it. I don't think I'll ever be ready to die. No, but not... not, 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 not oh, you mean you. Yeah. Do I leave behind? You're right. Whether the person dies one, two, three, and it's a shock, or whether the person is sick, and then they die. I agree with you, because I had both. Yeah. My father died, like, so unexpectedly. My mother was sick, and you're not ready for it. No, a, a loss is a loss is a loss. Right. You know, and whether whether you know it's, I mean, maybe it's you can better prepare yourself for it. But at the same time, like, what are you preparing really prepare. yourself for? That's right. I've prepared myself to die. I've, you know, done all the necessary work that needs to be done. We've made arrangements for Daddy. Um, 
you know, the it's, house. It's like the, Nicholas Flamel with the, the elixir from the Philosopher's Stone, you know, like now they realize they shouldn't keep this stone around in case Voldemort gets it, so he's got to get his affairs in order before the, the effects wear off. Oh, Joe, I can't. <laughs> I'm just saying, well, I, don't, I don't want the Dark Lord to come in here and take over oh. all, all the magical kingdom. Right. Again. So I think really that the, um, the thing I'm trying to do the most is spend as much money as I can. Because we have this running joke between <laughs> us. <laughs> I thought you were being fucking serious. And I was like... <laughs> that every time I buy something... <laughs> I'm spending his inheritance. I, I've said this for a couple of years. And she'd be like, oh, yeah, we bought new couches. I'm like, what, what are you doing? That's like, that's money that's earmarked for me. Right. And now I kind of feel bad about it. No. Yeah, not like that bad, but, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a good relationship. It, you know, we joke around a lot. Well, the first thing, so you haven't seen me in over a year now. Yeah. Uh, until yesterday. Yeah. And the first thing you said when I walked in the door was, Oh, good, you lost weight because the last time you really looked like shit. <laughs> well, the last time I saw you, I, I, I don't look great now, but I looked worse. Um, so, yeah, I worry that what caused my illness will affect you. See, and, and that's the thing, like, I, I've run it through my head multiple times, like, me dying. And I'm not really worried about it. No, I'm not worried. Like? You know, I used to be afraid of dying. But then I look, it sounds so stupid, but I say to myself, so many people have done it already. Yeah. So, nothing new. Exactly. It's, it, it's, it's like uh, everyone on OnlyFans now. <laughs> once, once someone takes off their clothes, like it's very easy for me to go and spread my butt cheeks on OnlyFans for a couple bucks. Well, I wouldn't do that. You know. I'm just saying, there are people who pay for that. That's quality okay. content. Okay. Got it. But, like, I, I'm not scared of it. And no, I'm not. And, and your, your main concern is everyone you love. Right. Especially the three of you. Like, my biggest thing is, and I said this on another podcast I was a guest on uh, not too long ago, like, what am I going to do with all my toys? You know, like... That's that's my. It's like, what am I going to do with my jewelry? He's worried about his toys. But that, that, that's that's really what I'm worried about because I want to make sure they go to someone who appreciates them <laughs> because they bring me great joy. And uh, I don't I don't think there's anyone in my my circle who really you know has the love for this stuff that I, that I do to to that extent anyway. But you, you we're re, we're Catholic. Yes. I was re I, I wouldn't say I'm Catholic now. I would say I'm very much an atheist. You got back into religion over the past couple of years. Um, to a point. I have, I think, a great relationship with God and Mary. And I, I don't go to church. Um... And I, I, I shouldn't think this way, but I do, because I go to church and then I see everybody gets up for communion and, and you know damn well. I think it's all bullshit. That not everybody, you know, yeah. I would never get up for communion because I didn't go to confession, whatever. And then I got sick and I couldn't go anywhere. And um, now I, I, I feel a warmth in me when I take the time to talk and pray. And that's okay because I feel God is forgiving. How much he can forgive of my life, I don't know. But um, yes, I've gotten more religious or more maybe spiritual. Not religious, spiritual, right, as, I, as I've gotten so you, sicker. You believe that there's something else out there? Like, you, um, like, this isn't the end. It's not the Sopranos where it just fades to black at the end and, and we never get no, a full No, I really, I, I believe that I'm going to see my parents and, you know, my friends. So it'll be like the movie Coco. Yeah, yeah. So does that mean I got to keep a picture of you up? You better. Now, here's the problem with that, though. Because as I walk around your house, you got a bunch of pictures of my brother. Here we go again. There's only one photo of me in this house. And it also includes my brother. 
I have offered to give her 8x10s from my wrestling days. Well, she, that's the issue. You won't give me an, a regular picture. I even bought you a gift, a canvas-printed yes. photo, family photo. And what's on your face? Well, I have my Revolting Blob mask on, but it is a tremendous family photo. It is. It's a very nice one if you didn't have that damn thing on your face. It really, I think, captures us in a very special way. And you I refused, think I gave in to you too much when you were little. You refused to hang that up. Well, I just haven't found the right spot. You got a goddamn zebra on your wall. I'm, I'm well, thinking, who is that zebra? I'm thinking, Why is he so fucking special? I'm thinking the best spot for that picture that you bought might be over my garbage pails in the garage. Oh, shit. At least it'll be on the wall. <sighs> you know I'm not ready for this, right? Obviously, I love you too. And I want to be able to do this again in a year. Oh, wouldn't that be fabulous? Because I got a whole theme for next year's party too. Well, they got to tell me that I should have at least five years. Um, but then another thing pops up. And then another thing pops up. Now with this latest incident, it might cut that a little short. Um, but I'll never actually leave you. You know me, I'm a pest. No, I, I look at it as even when, when it's finally time for you to go. Yeah, I won't be able to call you every day. But you're not really going anywhere. You're, you're you're part of me, you're in my blood, okay. you're in my DNA. You're if, still going to hear my voice every day. I hear your voice so, because every time I do something, <laughs> like I picture it as it plays out in my head. Like, every, like I bought that Eternia playset for $3,000. <laughs> See, but that was when you were sick and you were just like, Joseph, do whatever makes right. you happy. And I was like, fuck, that's all I need to hear. <laughs> but I, I think about like something like that and... Like, I picture your voice in my head going, Joseph Michael, don't you fucking dare. And you know that I call you Joseph Michael. It's always you, Joseph Michael. When you my friends you joke head. about that because mm -hmm. when you would, like, you'd be mad at me for whatever or didn't know where I was, you'd call everybody's house and leave messages like, Joseph Michael, if you're at Armando's house and you can hear this message, I swear I am not a happy camper. Happy mm -hmm. camper is a big thing too with you. you. You stole my car. That wasn't that time. No, but you did steal my car. As I stole a car, big deal. I knew just where it was when Grandma Grandma called me and said, your car's gone. I said, and where's Joseph? He's at work. I said, okay. So I called Aunt Nancy to go pick up the car and make the fucking work now, on it. Now, now, to be fair, <laughs> by the time you and Dad got home, and, and now we're going to have the big, the big talk. I'm, I'm about to get punished, grounded, whatever it is. And, and you're on a fucking rampage because dad would just, dad is the passive one. Like he's, he's yeah. going to let you handle it and, and you're just slamming on the damn table and cursing and this. And, and at the very end, you I go, do have a mouth from the gutter. Yeah, like, where do you think I got it from? I tell people all the time, if you ever wonder about me, talk to my parents for five minutes and you'll get it. But you're, you're banging on the table and you just look at me and you go, and did you fucking think you'd get away with it? <laughs> And I just looked at you and dead honest, I wasn't even trying to be funny. I go, 100%. I didn't think. Yeah, grandma's I, old. She I said, Grandma's old. Class She'd class. never realize it. And Dad started laughing so hard that it absolutely destroyed your whole argument. And like, that was it. It was a wrap. I was good to go. And, and then Meatball finds out about this. And he's fucking livid that I didn't get punished. He stole a damn car. Like, and you guys didn't do anything. And the thing was, he didn't have a license. <laughs> you know, he didn't have his license yet. That was the big issue. You know. See, you like, know? It's, a lot it's just a lot of shit we can laugh over, though. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Like, but even even the other day, like I, you know, like if you don't laugh, you'll cry. That's right. And you said to me I over the phone, this. you said. Joseph, I swear to God, you'll be the death of me. <laughs> and what did I say? I said, 
you can't blame me because I think the cancer got you first. <laughs> and we <laughs> fucking left. And to a lot of people that may sound fucked up, but that's how we are. Right. Maybe we're a little fucked up. Hey. Who cares? I don't care what people think, really. Exactly. As long as I know in my conscience, I can live with my conscience, that's all I care about. You know? And I have a lot of reasons to want to live. There was a time when I didn't think I did. But I did. You would have missed this great He-Man party. That's right. I would have. And I would have looked down from heaven, or hopefully. And, and you would have said... seen it and saying, oh, damn. I, I would have been there. I could have been buying all these new action figures at Walmart that I well, refuse to go to. I, it's just that I can't get in of the car. I, I just think you should, like, listen, it's my birthday. I shouldn't have to drive myself to Walmart. I'm sorry. I should have been allowed to sit in the cart as you pushed to the toy section. Okay. Like, I don't think that is too much to ask. If I, if I could have, I would have believed me. Do you think I do a lot of these things just to embarrass you in public? No. Oh, I'm way past being embarrassed by you. Oh, thanks. Way past. Or not by you, by the things that you do. But, like, I'm not you doing know? them specifically. I know. But, like, sometimes you, you feel like I You have a good time in your life, and you know what? That is fantastic. It really is. I'm so happy for that. And when you told me you were going to come down for your birthday, it's been so long since we've celebrated a birthday together. And we hope, I hope we get to do it again. I really do. I hope there's new figures for you <laughs> to buy for me. Because there's always going to be more toys. That's true. You know, that's true. But, um... You know, but this was nice. I, I didn't expect this. Yeah. But it was fun, right? Yeah, it was. It's nice to me talking to you. I mean, I'm a great conversationalist. Yes, you are. I'm, I'm dynamite. Like, what is it? Like, are, are, like, do you ever like sit back and say, "Wow, I really raised an absolute goddamn legend of a son." Well, I don't do that. I raised a good man. Who now spreads his butt cheeks on the internet for money? You do a lot for money. I've learned. <laughs> And thank God you, you know, you're healthy and you have a decent job and you can support yourself and that matters to me. Really does. So you want to do this again next year? Yep. Next year, let's make a date, September 13th, 2021. 2021. We'll do it. You got me. Man called Sting birthday party? Oh, God. <laughs> Must we? Yes, man called Sting. <laughs> Love you. Like I said, his mom's the best, as you can see in that video, in that audio clip, if you just listened. I'm going to play one more Mama Shoes clip. This one is uh, from over a year ago. February, episode 289. It's almost 100 episodes ago. Almost. Wow. Crazy. This is the clip of uh, Joe taking his mom to Disney for the first time. This is uh, before we did audio. So if you're watching on YouTube, um, it'll just be blank. I know you people, right? You people just listen in the background anyway. So whatever. Let's listen to it. Enjoy it. I'll be back one more time after this clip to uh, wrap things up. I don't have much fun. I mean, I had a busy week. You have a busy week, right, Joe? We're too busy, oh, my guys, God. This so week. busy. So, so and like, I, I actually mean that. I actually was busy this week. I, um, I think I spoke about this before. My parents are moving. They decided they want to go back to New York. I, I call this the colossal mistake. But, <laughs> um, my mom had never been to Disney World in her life, ever. 65 years old. I said, before you go, I'm going to take you to Disney World. And she was like, eh, I don't really know. I don't think I need to. But I was like, fuck it. I was like, this is the last chance you're probably going to have yeah. to go. 
I, you know, I don't, my mom's not exactly a big traveler, so I can't see her being yes. excited to jump on a plane in the to future. To go to Disney, no. Just so, yeah. So I, I picked her up. They uh, closed down the house. My dad went up um, early, took my mom to Magic Kingdom for the first time. And in the days leading up to it, this woman was so fucking excited as she got <laughs> closer. It. And Gomez, let me tell you, now I know what it's like to have a child. Oh, Be- yeah? <laughs> because, tell me. Well, number one, my mom can't really do all the walking, so we got a wheelchair for her. And I have to wheel this person around. So it's like if you what you would have to do with a stroller. With the, with a stroller, yeah. So that's number one. And then every <laughs> every couple of minutes, oh, I really want mouse ears. Buy me mouse ears. <laughs> oh, I really want a churro. Can I get a I snack? Can I get a drink? Oh, can we go back to the store? I want a sweater. Can yeah. we go? Oh, can we get ice cream? And I was like, holy shit. Like, is this what? Because I will never breed. I may never have sex again just to... <laughs> That's uh, that's that's how it is, bro. They don't stop. And then we're going around. She's seeing everything. She's having a great time. She really did have such a good time. And this might be the right. the first and only time in my life where I felt like a good person, oh. um, for for doing something for someone else. Um, she's complaining at one point. She goes, "This is bullshit. Like I haven't gotten to meet any of the characters. You would think they would all be walking around, because you know now she's a Disney expert. She's been there for three hours. Oh, I sh- I should be able to see Pluto and Mickey, and the- and she's throwing a fit like she hasn't seen anyone. Two minutes later, she sees Stitch. Love it, Stitch. So of all the people, so she gets to meet Stitch, gets a picture while he's dancing." At one point, he waved his butt at us because I guess that's how Stitch says hello. He does kind of. I get it. (laughs) So then she was so happy because she got to meet Stitch. She felt like she got the full experience because she got to meet a character. She had snacks. She had drinks. She got merchandise. And I was fucking exhausted. So now I know everything about being a parent. Yeah, it's true, though. Nothing you said was not true. That exactly is the experience of having a child at the park. It's just buying things nonstop, complaining because she wants to go here, this, that. Bro, you nailed it. I mean, this is what it's like, you see? It's not fun. No, and it's it's funny because uh, my buddy Brian Myers took his family to Disney this week, first time for them. And then we started comparing pictures we took. He's showing me pictures of his girls with Stitch, and I'm sending him pictures, pictures of my mom with Stitch. I'm sure it's the same pictures. <laughs> it's basically the same thing. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but that's fun. That's look at you. He's such a good son. Look yeah, at I'm, that. I'm, I'm the best. They call me a good son. That's what they call me. Did it feel good to hold that number one spot, number one son, for a little bit? So here, here's something. I'm, I'm going to drop a little inside info. So I have said for years when in my parents' house, they had a bunch of pictures up. There were about 14 photos of my brother. There was one of me, but it wasn't a photo of me. It was a photo that was put up only because it also included my brother. <laughs> I said, now what I'm going to do is we took a bunch of pictures while at Disney I'm going to get them all blown up as big as possible, fucking poster size. And I'm going to ship them all to her new house because there is no fucking way she can possibly talk her way out of not hanging up at least one of these in her new house. Can't wait. Maybe all of them will be up. Maybe all, I should have my own, my own room. You might have done such a good job with this Disney trip. You might get a whole wall, bro. Imagine. So we even I even got the, the professional photographer guy to take photos of us in front I of the it. castle. And then there's one where they told her, put your hand out because they like Photoshop. They digitally oh, like, like, like a character Bell or something. In, and it was uh, Tinkerbell. So they uh, put like Tinkerbell in her hand. Love it. So I had like a fucking 18 by 24 of them. <laughs> oh, you're killing it, bro. You're killing it. <laughs> you know, that's how you know the magic is there. Fucking Tink in your palm. Come on now. That's awesome. That sounds like a great time. <laughs> Did she get her cookies? Yes. She was begging for cookies from Gideon's. I uh, remember a couple weeks ago, I put the video up on YouTube of uh, my friend Courtney and I going to Gideon's in Disney Springs. Well, I did have some cookies put to the side that I had in the fridge to keep them fresh. Unfortunately, they did not last as long as they needed to to be able to 
be brought to my mother's. So on the way down to pick her up, I had to stop, wait online for an hour, get new fresh cookies, which she was absolutely thrilled about. She loved these cookies. And she also told me that Courtney needs to take over my channel because she agrees with her opinions more than me. Oh, man. You just stay losing, Joe. My <laughs> goodness. <laughs> Unbelievable. That Joe. What a good son. I'm gonna wrap things up here, guys. Uh hope you enjoyed this episode dedicated to Mama Shoes. Uh, I don't know if Joe will be back next week. Whatever. He wants to come back. Come back. He wants to take another week, two weeks, three, whatever he wants to do. Whatever. We'll figure it out when the time comes. Uh, this week was the last week of Slain versus Slain. Uh, Rare Exports, Bad Santas. I enjoy both these movies. Um, the plan was we didn't we didn't have a set in stone. Usually, you know, we do show prep throughout the week. We'll we'll mention things that we want to do maybe uh, through text and stuff. But usually. Uh, real fast before the show starts, we just kind of give a general idea of uh, what we got to talk about. And uh, we'll also figure out, oh, so wait, next week you want to spin a wheel? You want to do that? Uh, the plan was uh, Aquaman uh, 2 was supposed to come out. Uh, no reviews yet on this. The embargo lifts uh, right as the movie is released or some crazy nonsense like this, which means it's fucking dog shit. But it also might mean it's wonderful. I mean, if we you give me some octopuses playing them drums, I'm good. I'll be happy. Uh, so we're probably going to go see that movie. Uh, maybe also uh, the Iron Claw, the Von Eric movie, uh, comes out this week. Seems like something that uh, you guys would be interested in hearing about. So... Uh, Something like that would have been next week's episode, but uh, obviously we'll play that by ear. We'll see what's going on. Last thing before I get out of here, the Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash mezmovie. This Saturday, Christmas Eve Eve at 11 a.m., I'll be going live. We're doing a uh, slaying and slaying Christmas Spectacular, all day Christmas Spectacular, 30 hours, I believe, is what I'm looking at doing here. Uh, we're going to go all, all through Saturday, Sunday, we'll probably wrap it up around dinner time, Sunday, Christmas Eve, you know, around uh, 5, 6, 7, we'll see what, what goes on, we'll play it by ear. For those with uh, family members who might not want to see the slaying portion that's going to be like uh middle of the night two three four a.m i'm probably going to show two three horror movies just to to throw in there any late night folks west coast folks about six o'clock again it's going to be back to wholesome family entertainment you know i've got blocks of of tv with original commercials in there, commercials from the 80s, 90s. So uh, I think it's going to be right up your alley. Pop in. I'm going to give a uh, general idea of what's playing. You know, like, oh, at 12 o'clock, we're going to be watching Nicktoons. So it'll be, we're going to watch the Doug Christmas special, stuff like that. Uh, Rocco's Modern Life Christmas special. That'll all be in the next two hours, stuff like that. You might not know exactly what's going to play, but you'll know you have an idea of it. That way you could pop in and out at your leisure. Um, yeah, should be a good time. Hop on in. So uh, until then, folks, that's Amore, Cowboy. Peace. Love you, Captain Joe.